Hey there, it's Von Tom 2020. We are back on Phoenix Craft to do some more building on the public trading hall. And as you can see, we have completed a little bit more. We've done a touch of the facade. And over there in the background, we have done a little bit of an outline of the wings where the villagers are going to be. And it's going to take us a second to, uh, say for example, clear all the trees and maybe do some modifications to the land. But uh, that's our plan today, and we're going to do the same on the other side over here. And in the meantime, we might need to go back to the... We might need to go back to the jungle base and visit Wa and the few uh, trading villagers she's got and see if we can get some more tools because I foresee the need for extra pickaxes. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's start this off. All right, so we have uh, cleared a rather large area here. Uh, both uh, Weird William and Wa both stopped by, and um, we uh, chipped away at this. Wa basically removed the, a giant hill that was all the way to about where that uh, stone begins right there. And on this side over here, we uh, added a length of hallway, and this is where the individual booths are going to be. And we've got the entire footprint laid out over here. And a little pig. Anyway... The outside area around the base of the walls has been filled in and, and kind of terraformed a little bit. Just a, a rough sketch so that the steps going up to the thing are actually starting to look like something. And, of course, I added a little bit to the front walls here so we can get a little bit of... and get our bearings. Oh, you hear that thunder? I might have to turn it off for tonight. So front door will be right here. And it looks like uh, the nether portal is a little bit off to one side Maybe I did my measurements wrong. I'm going to have to move that thing now. Symmetry, yo. So this entire area down here, the grass will come up and these walls will get uh, kind of developed. And as we finish the uh, outside perimeter of the wall right here and start developing this, this will be our workstation. And the villagers will come in through here from the breeder and come up little uh, windy railroad bits right here and uh, right here. So... I'm really looking forward to doing that. I got to get that part finished before Will comes back. He was going to um, start uh, bringing the lines in. And then I think that uh, the breeder is either going to be in that direction about, uh, say, 120 blocks or in that direction. But uh, the ocean's not so far away right there. Okay, we've made a little bit of progress here. We have the blocks laid out where the rails are going to go. The booths are laid out with the pressure plates. And uh, behind here, we've got the uh, simple redstone bits going on. I need to put some uh, switches on these blocks right here in between to power the powered rails. Whoops, okay. And on the front side, uh, the booths are coming together quite nicely. It's uh, just about time to start um, putting in the decoration box up here. So I think it's coming along pretty nice. I need to mirror it on this side real quick before I move on uh, or get much higher. I'd, I'd like to uh, be able to remember what I was doing. <laughs> That's what it really comes down to is uh, forgetting what I was doing. Anyway, that's where we are. All right, we're back, and as you can see, I've made a lot of progress. We've got uh, each of the wings um, going out from the uh, the northern side of the build. Got the floors done, and both hallways leading to the uh, the north and south, respectively, have been done, and the booths are ready to go. Ready for guys. Just got to add some rails. And on these ones right here, I've still got to build the uh, booze. I think this is going to host... Uh, oh, I'm starving. Hang on. I think this uh, is going to hold uh, 132. All right. Yeah, okay, I'll finish that snack later on. It'll take me 15 minutes. 
anyway, um, three more wings go right here, and each one is going to hold uh, 12 guys. I think the total build is going to... Ooh, there's Wa. The total build is going to hold about 120 or 132 or something like that. What you doing? <laughs> she brought me some blaze rods. I got to put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Oh, thank you so much. Oh, cow hides. Uh, yeah, I've got to put a hundred and uh, I'm sorry, I've got to put about uh, a dozen end chests in here so that everybody will have access. Uh, oh, it looks like I got a map too. Hmm. We'll look at that later. All right. So everything's coming together pretty nice. I am going to reclaim my scaffolding, and I'm going to go down here and start building the floors down here on this wing right here. And uh, might just stay up until after dark and see if I can uh, catch some phantoms. Duck. All right. Here we go. Okay. Go ahead. All right, I think Wa has a present for me that involves that map that she uh, gave me earlier, so. Uh oh, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. It's the Phoenix Craft logo stamp of approval. So uh, I believe this was made by Cinnamon Lol. Very, very chic. Very, very cool. And uh, apparently, uh, Wad just bought that at his uh, shop. Uh, was that in Cinnamon City? Cinnamon City? Now i got to make a road through here. And i got to rescue my cow, my boat cow. I see the mushroom farm is doing well. <laughs> All right. Let's go uh, do some more floors. Bye, Wa. I was waving at you, and I was walking backwards. So here we are yet again. We're going to catch up on progress. I have uh, been uh, I've been trying to uh, get a little bit of wool, a little bit of time. I don't want to put too much lag on the server and have like 50 sheep running around. So I just set up something super simple. And you can uh, manually trigger it like that or it'll trigger when the grass block gets updated. Either when the grass grows or when one of those guys eats. Pretty cool. It trickles in. It adds up. Ain't no big deal. I mean, I know I could probably put like um, 16 sheep in there and, uh, you know, have it all taken care of in a about 15 minutes, 20 stacks of wool, but yeah, we'll get there. Cutting down on lag is more important now, because as I understand, this, the uh, releases we're in right now are really not exactly perfectly stable. I mean, great job, I'm loving it. But uh, as a server, yeah, uh, all kind of lag. So what we're looking at here is what I finished uh, in my last session. We were able to get the floors laid out for the entire um, interior of the building. And, of course, the uh, the blank spaces here between the uh, uh, redstone guts and uh, this edge right here. This is where the building itself is going to go. The facade, one might say. We have double rows of carpet. This was uh, Weird William's uh, idea. You can catch Weird, Weird William's... Uh, video on his, uh, well, let's see, he went through several variations, and every time we get an update, it seems to uh, change a little bit of something, but uh, his last couple of trading videos, he had a double layer of carpet to uh, stymie the pathfinding tendencies of the villagers, and uh, also mobs. Here's another double layer right here, and if you look at the way that's laid out, it would make it impossible for... Um, mobs to get into the area where they could damage the workstations of the villagers themselves 
or if one happened to appear in here, he would be caught between that double air and that double air of carpet, and he would be unable to pathfind out of this wing. Same for these right here. So at least we would have the problem isolated. We wouldn't have mobs like freely wandering around up in here. So Weird William and I worked last night. And if I haven't mentioned it before, this is his, uh, his villager trading hall. The design is in his latest video. He, he was one of the um, early discoverers of the little dynamic where if you place down a uh, workstation in front of a villager who is in this trading hall area right here, and you don't like his trades, that you can break it back up, replace it, and the guy's um, trades will reset, and you can just keep doing this until you find the ones that you like. It's an absolutely fabulous dynamic, because now you don't have to breed like 500 villagers or 500 librarians to get that mending book. You just got to breed one and replace the uh, workstation a couple of times until he gives you what you like at the good price. So he figured this out. He brought the attention of some of the SciCraft guys who um, uh, developed some uh, videos on the same topic, which is uh, absolutely brilliant discovery there. And this is the um, expanded version. I took his uh, trading hall design, skinned it up, and we started working in tandem on this project. And so we are going to have where each of these floors are right here, this design. Right here we're going to have a wing that is going to be dedicated to a certain type of villager. Like let's say uh, shepherds on this side and fishermen on this side. Whatever, you know what I mean. And one entire side is going to be all librarians. That's probably going to be this end down here. We'll have a, a pretty good arrangement. I don't know if we're going to mess around with the leather workers or the uh, butchers too much. Because, you know, I don't really dig on their trades. The leather from the cows is uh, too useful for other things, and you know how it is. So uh, over here, um, I'm thinking about taking up these two rows of slabs. I might have mentioned this earlier, and uh, building a bridge going across to somewhere in there and making two giant pools. Might work on that uh, at the beginning of the next episode, but right now our priority is to get these uh, to get these booths in place. Now we're going to have the rail lines coming up from the breeder. Now the rails end right here, but they will be going down like this and down here, and they will go down into the basement area right here, where we will have a four-way intersection right here that will feed a rail going up right there, rail going up right there, one right here, and one right here to feed the four corners, if you will, of the trading hall itself. And we will fill the stalls in one at a time and slowly begin to develop the uh, traders. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it may cause a little bit of controversy. Many of our uh, much-loved server mates as the server started developed their own mini trading halls. Some of them maybe larger than others and uh, more detailed than others. And the idea from the get-go was to make a uh, public trading hall, something that will engages in all the time. But between the entity lag and the uh, number of entities uh, that are equally distributed among the different uh, bases, it's caused the lag to be uh, a little bit maybe accelerated. So we had the idea to make a public trading hall, but... Um, I, I do believe that there are some folks, uh, completely justified, who would really like to uh, keep their own trading hall. So a little bit of controversy there. We're going to have to solve this somehow. We'll just have to see how it turns out, you know. And if, um, you know, this uh, build ends up being a bust, well, at least it's going to look good. And in the meanwhile, if it comes down to a server-wide war... I'm a chicken out. Okay, so that's all for tonight, folks. This is going to wrap up this episode. And by the time we come back for next episode, we'll probably have a lot more done. So um, looking forward to seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. Remember to uh, like the video if you enjoyed yourself and uh, 
Support our channel by subscribing if you really liked it. So that said, thank you very much and have a great day.